Hey, Fred Minnick here with a tasting. Now, this is not a blind tasting. This is a just a basic product tasting. I've got a lot of things to catch up on. You may not know this, but I have a backlog of things to taste. Well, I try to get everything caught up in like these blind tastings. Between all the podcasts and Dash Radio and the Whiskey Club and all these other things, I've gotten behind. So we're going to do this together. I'm going to go ahead and knock these out so we don't have to uh, sit on these any longer. And I keep they keep building up, building up. I'm like, and people keep asking me, hey, when are you going to taste this? 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 So I'm tasting it now through uh, throughout. So what we have here is we have a Tennessee Tasters Selection. This is a Jack Daniels product. It is the Jamaican Allspice. Now, what this is, this is where they have special tasters from Jack Daniels, and they come along and basically pick their, um, you know, pick their favorite out of a out of a selection. And this is toasted with Jamaican Allspice wood. Listen up. This sounds really cool. I love Jamaican food, like Jamaican jerk chicken, and I love allspice, especially like Chinese allspice. So this is like. This is this is gonna be fun, and as a big rum nerd, uh, I find that you know those Jamaican spices are absolutely fantastic. Now this is a new product to the scene, uh, Ingram River Age. This is a straight rye whiskey that's been aged on the river since three years old, and it's basically been in a you know been aging in the river, and uh, you know this is how whiskey used to be made. They would basically they would distill it, put it in a barrel, float it down to St. Louis or New Orleans or wherever, and that's where it would extract the extract the age from the barrel. It was during that time on those flat boats and river boats and what have you. So this is going to be a little bit of a throwback to that. And next up is, of course, Jefferson's is really the brand that brought this type of aging to the contemporary movement with the Jefferson's Ocean. For those who always ask, is it real? Yes, Jefferson's Ocean is definitely real. It is not a gimmick. They actually do age stuff at Ocean. I've talked to the people who run the Ocean liners that that uh, use that, and I've seen. I've talked to people who have seen the barrels. So, it is a real product. Uh, but we're not going to be tasting Jefferson Ocean, Ocean today. We're going to be tasting their uh, single barrel. They just opened up um, single barrels, so they're going to start doing barrel selections for clubs like mine. And uh, you basically, you're going to, on the market, you're going to have a Jefferson's uh, single barrel. Now, a little history behind Jefferson's is, you know, they come out, you know, Trey, Zoller, Trey and Chet Zoller started this brand. And they were sourcing whiskey. And, you know, they had a, a whiskey make my top five and my best bourbons of the century so far. The Jefferson's 17-year-old, uh, to me, is one of the most sublime things that's, you know, been put out on the market in this century. Absolutely delicious. But of course, when you source whiskey, stocks dry up and you are you're no longer really able to get the stocks that you want to, used to get easily. And so they partnered with Kentucky Artisan Distillers in Crestwood, Kentucky, and now they are owned by Pernod Ricard. So they have a lot more buying power than they did back in the old days. So I'm excited to see what Jefferson's has moving forward. So in addition to that single barrel. They got a cognac finish. They got a cognac finish rye. So very excited to taste all four of these. And let's just jump right into it. Going to start with the Jack Daniels Tennessee Taster Select. To make an allspice. Woo! Woo Man, you want to talk about, you want to talk about some spice on up in here. This is like this is like going to a lumber yard and smelling like wood getting toasted and charred in the back. This is something. Definitely extremely spicy. Wow. Okay. You remember when I was a kid, I we used to get these like cinnamon these cinnamon uh, toothpicks. This is like a, a, a fire cinnamon toothpick. It's just cinnamon city, just so hot. It's a cinnamon red hot. It's a chili pepper. This shit is hot. I mean, this is like actual hot, the hot, hot. Like it feels like it's almost like a hot sauce. But after that, there's like a big old bite of banana, that classic Jack Daniels flavor. Pretty interesting. 
pretty interesting. So let's go to glass number two. Ingram River Aged, a three-year-old rye whiskey aged on a river. You know, my first thought is, man, I hope I don't smell a catfish or like some um, some guy bathing in the nude on a sh- on an open stream. That's just my first my first thought. You know, what does that say about me? My first thought is about a you know country guy bathing in the nude on the river. I have issues, I guess. All right. So here we go. Very grainy, um, slightly alcohol forward, but there's a touch of vanilla coming in underneath. The nose is not really, the re- nose really isn't, is, is pretty muted. The flavor is pretty, pretty light, but um, I definitely applaud them for, for the methods, uh, but I'm not really seeing that flavor profile you know, there. But of course, I say that about most three-year-old whiskeys. You don't see a lot of really good three-year-old whiskeys on the market, especially at 98 proof, you know. Uh, but there is promise there. You can definitely see that there is there is something going on. There's no flaws in it. It just, it tastes young. So more time in the barrel on the river, and I think we might have a hit. Okay, so let's now go to the Jefferson's Reserve single barrel. Now, what I'm really excited about this is it's opening up to barrel picks. Now, barrel picks is really what gets whiskey geeks excited more about, you know, than anything. You know, people talk about Henry McKenna. They talk about Pappy. They talk about Blanton's. I get excited about a barrel pick, and that's where, like, a store or a club goes and picks it themselves. The fact that Jefferson's is bringing that into their portfolio Gets me really, really excited. Where are you going, Tater? Hi, Tater. Hey. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. This is definitely showing some, showing some like, um, you know, some complexities on like between like a honey and like some fruit. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of like a cornbread. You're seeing some like rye bread. Um, but if I'm doing like a barrel pick, if I'm going in and I'm and I'm taking a look at this, I'm asking if I can get it at cash drink. That's the one thing about it. They're coming in here at 100 proof, and if this is my barrel proof or my barrel pick, I'm saying, hey, can I get that at cash drink? But that's what I say for almost all of them because most things I tend to like tasting out of the barrel and uh, adding water to my particular preference for dilution. So while this is good, uh, I think it could be better at cash drink. So let's go to the, uh, let's now go to the uh, straight rye finished in cognac cast. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Some bitch that's good. I'm a big fan of cognac. Uh, Cognac and I have a long history you know, I had one of my first professional trips there, and I studied uh, quite a bit in cognac, and that's where I learned a lot. Um, it's where I had my first, like, sessions with the aroma kits, you know, before they were, were even made in America. And this is, um, this has the essence of cognac. This has, uh, like, the dried apricot. This has a lot of the dried fruits, like some dates. Um, but the cognac does not overpower it. You can still taste like the the herbs and the spice from the rye, so this is like the perfect marriage between a whiskey and the barrel finish. And I've talked about this many times about how I don't I love the barrel finish category. I don't like seeing the word bourbon on them on the labels. I feel very differently about rye whiskey because rye whiskey is not a protected term. Bourbon is a protected term. Rye is not. And you are looking at something here. 
that this is exactly where uh, barrel finishes need to be going. This is beautiful. This has all the essence of a cognac and the complexities of a rye whiskey. So absolutely, absolutely delicious. So if I'm doing a if I'm doing a ranking of these, um, I'm putting my I'm putting the Jefferson's uh, cognac finish first, the Tennessee Tasters second, the Jefferson single barrel third, and then the Ingram River Aged Whiskey. Uh, all of them, however, are drinkable and. Uh, I would recommend them on, on the right occasion. And uh, none of them had any flaws. All of them were very drinkable. But that's going to do it for this tasting. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to see more honest tastings and celebrity interviews where I drink whiskey with folks like Ludacris and NFL uh, Hall of Famer Charles Woodson, then click the subscribe button, and uh, you're not going to regret it. If you'd like to become a member and get some exclusive content, click the join button. But that's going to do it for this tasting. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thanks for Tater for stopping by. Until next time, no licking handrails, no licking trash cans. And remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers.